I'm sharing eight ways to not overreact and remain unbothered in today's video. Hello everyone, Jennifer here and welcome to The Daily Connoisseur. I'm hiding in my bathroom and you know these videos are always the best ones. <laughs> Today I'm sharing eight ways to not overreact and remain unbothered. This video is brought to us by the Chic Society, which is my private membership group here on YouTube. And I do one vodcast every Friday and I go live once a month, either on YouTube or we do a Zoom call. And we have so much fun in the Chic Society. It's really a great place to be. And membership is only $1.99 a month. I also have two upper tiers. You are seeing one of the upper tiers down below. These are the chic connoisseurs. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give the uppermost tier, the elegant connoisseur mentions, and many of them have businesses or they're high patrons of the channel. And I just want to thank the chic society for supporting us here on the daily connoisseur. Okay. So the motto of this channel is keep calm and remain classy. Why do I say that at the end of every single one of my videos? <laughs> It's just to remind ourselves that we are a community here. We have each other. We need to remain calm because the things that are important to us in life, which um, are elegance, dignity, classiness, all of that is really going away in our modern day and it's dying out. So we need to remind ourselves that, that we are here. There is a group of us, of people who are interested in this and that we need to keep calm and remain classy. Why do I say remain? because you are a classy person. I know you're not supposed to say classy. People always say you shouldn't say classy, but there's no other way to really put it. Classy, elegant, that is you. And you may not feel that way about yourself, but if you're watching my channel, you're interested in that. If this video was recommended to you on YouTube, the algorithm is trying to tell you something. <laughs> okay. So we're going to talk about not overreacting today. I am going to quote a lot of different sources in this video celebrities, um, famous quotes, authors. I'm quoting from various religions and proverbs around the world. Let's take it all in. We can learn from everything. Okay. These are all of my personal experiences. So I've come a long way with overreacting and I'm not saying that I don't do it anymore because I do, but I, I used to be a very kind of hot headed reactive person. Thankfully, I'm also an introvert and rather shy. So a lot of the time when I would have anger, I still wouldn't say anything about it to other people. <laughs> I would keep it in and just have rage boiling inside of me, for example. So that's actually a good thing because as we're going to learn here, we need to really control our tongue. Um, but this is from my personal experience. I've gotten so much better about this, not only in my personal life, but just when things happen out in the real world, like in traffic and stuff like that, I remain unbothered. I do tend to overreact about certain issues and I'll talk about those later on in the video, but let's jump into number one. So this is my first tip. When you are angry and prone to overreacting, pause, do nothing and see what happens. Okay. And I have a quote here from Lori Deschenay who says, practice the pause, pause before judging, pause before assuming, pause before accusing, pause whenever you're about to react harshly and you'll avoid doing and saying things you'll later regret. So that was Lori Deschenay from Little Buddha who said that. So pause. Okay. This is huge. Pause. And you're going to see this all throughout this video. The trouble with overreacting is it's usually a trigger. We get triggered and then we have this hot headed reaction and we don't think we don't pause and we immediately say something or do something that we regret. Now, elegant people have control of themselves and their emotions. They're very steady, grounded people. And I think that's why elegant people naturally make others feel comfortable because elegant people are comforting to be around. You don't feel like they're going to flip a switch and just suddenly <laughs> go crazy on you, you know? So pause. That's my number one tip. My number two tip is to analyze how you react to situations because awareness is truly the first step. You cannot change your behavior if you're not even aware of it. Okay. So you really have to notice 
a pattern to your overreactions? Do you tend to get overheated or overreact to certain people or certain situations? You need to know your trigger points, okay? This is really big. I have a few quotes here. The novelist Ellen Glasgow said, what happens is not as important as how you react to what happens, okay? So you have to become conscious about how you react to these situations. I have another quote here from Epictetus. I can never say his name. Epictetus said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. That's essentially the same quote. So of course what happens to us is important, but we can't control what happens to us. You cannot control if some jerk cuts you off on the freeway. That is totally out of your control. You can control how you react to it. And this is where elegance really comes in and self-control. I'll never forget this. Uh, you know, I live in California and the roads are crazy here and people are, you know, I love my state, but sometimes people can be a little uh, entitled. So I'll never forget this. I was in Santa Monica pulling off on the freeway to go home and I'm on the off ramp and this man uh, in a uh, convertible, like a real super expensive car, I don't know what kind, in a convertible with the top down and he was an older middle-aged man and he had like a girl who looked like she was 19 in the, <laughs> in the passenger seat. He cut me off that I almost get off the freeway, right? And so as a reaction, I honked my horn. Now that's perfectly acceptable, okay? Because this is like a, a, it's not like I'm like honking my horn trying to get, I just, as a natural reaction, honked my horn. The man proceeded, <laughs> he proceeded to, to flip me the bird. He had the middle finger up in front of me and I'm like sitting there behind him, the whole red light, he did this. And I remember, I experienced a level of rage. <laughs> That is like heretofore been not seen, okay? I was so angry. I didn't do anything about it and I didn't return the gesture or anything like that. I didn't even yell at him. I'm just sitting there like feeling so much rage that this person is such a jerk. Okay, so those types of things happen to us all the time, but we should not react. Don't stoop to this guy's level, okay? Know your triggers. So if you tend to be triggered in traffic, just be conscious of that. If you tend to be triggered by a certain family member, be aware of that. And when you're around them, you can be aware of your reactions. And let's go back to the first tip, you can pause. Tip number three, use other people's negativity toward you as a motivating tool. This is something that I do. It's one of my secrets. So I obviously, as a, a content creator and as an author, I, I have a lot of energy coming toward me. And I mentioned this in my 10 year update video that for the past 10 years on YouTube, every single day of my life, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments coming toward me. Some of them are questions. Some of them are praise. Some of them are uh, criticisms. And I have learned to put a block up with that, but I have specifically used the negative feedback and the criticisms and the people who are just downright mean and trying to trigger me, I use those people to better myself. That That is what I do. And so I do get specific haters who are like super like hating against me and I do not let that bother me. I am amused by it. And I use those people as motivation to be more successful. So you can, you can use that as fuel to uh, drive you towards your goals even further. And that's one way to look at it. Tip number four, this is critical. Never respond to someone when you are angry. I have four Chinese proverbs here, three or four, and I'm going to read them to you right now. These are really good. Anger is always more harmful than the insult that caused it. So think about that. Anger is more harmful to you than the insult that the other person gave you because you're having all these negative emotions, you're getting all this anger and, and it's natural. You shouldn't stifle that. It's okay like if somebody just completely <laughs> insults you to feel angry, but you need to decide what you're going to do with that anger. And I wanna go back to that poem I read in the latest Chic Assignment by Rumi, This Being Human is a Guest House. And he talked about how as humans, we have these emotions that come to us every single day and we need to decide what we're going to do with them. He says, welcome those emotions because they're there to teach you something. 
And I love that. So yes, you are going to feel anger. It's, I don't want you to be this void of nothing that feels nothing. You're going to feel the anger. That's okay. You're a human. Decide what you're going to do with it and welcome it. It's like when I get the crazy hater comments, I can decide to get all angry and up in arms and right back. And <laughs> that is just so pointless. I decide what to do with the anger that I might feel from those comments. I process it and I decide to use it as fuel for being better. Okay, so um, anger is more harmful than the insult that caused it. Here's another Chinese proverb. Never answer a letter while you are angry. <laughs> okay, people don't really write letters anymore, but I mean, I wish they did, but uh, this could be like responding to somebody or writing an email or a text. Never write a letter or never answer a letter while you are angry. You need to wait. Go back to tip one, pause. Here's another one. In the midst of great joy, do not promise anyone anything. In the midst of great anger, do not answer anyone's letter. <laughs> so that's kind of a, a take on the previous one. And here is the final Chinese proverb. If you are patient in one moment of anger, you will escape a hundred days of sorrow. Be patient in your anger. Allow that anger to pass through you. Do what you need to do with it. Give it to God. Do what you need to do. But um, allow it patience. Don't react, okay? Tip number five is to gain control of your tongue. Gain control of it. Proverbs 21, 23 says, Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Can you keep your mouth and your tongue? What does that mean? It doesn't mean physically. It means, can you control what you say? Can you bite your tongue? Can you not be so hot headed? You keep your soul from troubles. That's a big deal. Not just your life, not just your mind, your soul will be kept from troubles if you can control your tongue. So that's really huge. So watch what you say. If you tend to be triggered, and let's say you're the type of person who will swear at somebody or just say something just really just to cut the other person and get them back, notice that you can save your soul from troubles if you control your tongue. Tip number six is to not neglect yourself. So oftentimes we can be really cranky or sensitive if we are lacking sleep, we're not eating healthy, we're not getting exercise, we're not taking necessary time for ourselves. So I love to take afternoon tea for myself every day. It's something I do every day. I usually have a book and a treat and a cup of tea. Everyone needs to leave me alone unless they want to join me and be pleasant, okay? But, <laughs> but nobody can ask me for things and, and this is my time to recharge. Uh, that, I like to take nice hot baths with lots of oils and just things like that that, that recharge me. I try to get more sleep now that type of thing, take care of myself, drink water. If you're neglecting yourself, you're running on empty, you're going to be more snappy and you are going to get into more altercations with people. And so you have to really look at that and don't neglect yourself. Tip number seven is to look at the big picture. Okay, here's where I come in. So I'm pretty good about remaining unbothered and remaining uh, calm and not overreacting with my personal life. And uh, even I've come a long way with my children. They're the ones who really can trigger me if, if it's like been a long day and, and the straw is about to break the camel's back, I might just lose it, you know what I mean? <laughs> or even, you know, with my husband or with my family, I've really come a long way and I'm pretty calm and I don't really have overreactions with them anymore, which is great. Also in public with strangers, I mean, I don't overreact with strangers, but where I do overreact is with uh, the way society is going, okay? And you know this on this channel, I get really passionate about things. I like to encourage people to not let themselves go, uh, not only physically, looks wise, but also their mind. And so I am a big critique of modern culture, popular culture. And I have videos in the past where I critique various things and uh, those have gotten a lot of attention. Now I've learned a lot from that because I realize that that is my own form of overreacting. Now it doesn't mean that you don't carry the same convictions because I still do. I carry all of my convictions that I've always had, but I have analyzed things. I look at the big picture of life and I'm trying to calm down a little bit more and just show my 
vision of the world to people here on my channel. That's all I can do. I cannot change other people. I can't change the vulgarity that is seeping into popular culture. All I can do is provide an alternative here on my channel. And as I grow older, and hopefully wiser, I am now seeing that. So I have had videos in the past on my channel where I have definitely overreacted to things. <laughs> and something gave me a light bulb moment. When I was interviewing Richard Thompson Ford, who wrote Dress Codes, that book is great because it uh, shared the fashion history, history of fashion, and how it's changed and come and gone and, and molded into different um, areas and it helped me not be so judgmental and reactionary toward what i see today now do i really like what i see today no i mean i don't i don't like the way things are going where people just don't care about their appearance anymore and and seem to be more sloppy and and it's seeping into everything so i still have that fire in me for that but uh i think I guess I have more compassion toward it. So look at the big picture when you're getting worked up over something, whether it's something political or societal or even in your own household, just look at the big picture, look at history. Um, where have we come from? What is the good in the situation that you can find? And that helps me now to not overreact. And finally, tip number eight is the elephant in the room that I really need to address because it's the thing that people say you shouldn't talk about in polite society, um, but it's the one thing that I have to share here because it's a major part of my own journey with not overreacting, and that is my prayer life and my faith life. And I know that there are people from all different walks of faith on this channel. so. Uh, we have everybody here and listen, you are all welcome. I'm just sharing with you that honestly, the first thing I do when I met with a confrontation, something serious that really bothers me, really disturbs my soul is I pray, I give it to God. And I can't tell you how many times I have been in my closet right there <laughs> with the door closed on my knees, face in the ground, literally crying and praying to God. I just have to tell you that I do that. I do that, and when I do that, I get the peace that passes understanding every single time. I, it's amazing. So this is individual for everybody. It depends on what you believe and, and um, how you cope with things. But to go, my advice for you is to go there and don't be ashamed of that. And you know, you don't need to do this in front of other people. I like to be private about that type of thing. So um, just however you can communicate with God or whatever you do to help you get through really difficult situations, it's better to take it there first than to get hot headed and overreact. You don't ever wanna say things that you will regret later, that you wish you never said. You cannot take your words back. And it is very easy to ruin a relationship forever when you say something that you don't mean um, or that is supercharged. So those are my tips for not overreacting and remaining unbothered. This is not a comprehensive list. I could go off on any of these subjects a little bit more if you like, or even expand on it, please let me know in the comment section down below. But I believe that these lessons and elegance are really important for both ladies and gentlemen that we need to work on ourselves. I'm not perfect. I mean, you know I'm not perfect, okay? And I know that you're not either. And But we have this community here where we can help each other and that is very important. I would like to take a moment now to thank the Elegant Connoisseurs for being such great supporters of the channel. So here are their mentions. Amanda Dykes, author of award-winning fiction, written to light the dark and lift your heart. Amy Floor from Azalea Spa Goods, handcrafted aromatherapy body oils. Brandy Still, silhouette artist, keeping alive the art of silhouette portraiture that dates back from 1700s France. Jenny Williams from Carrot Top Paper Shop, offering colorful literary wall art and book-themed gifts to inspire every woman to be the heroine of her life. Elaine Brisebois is a certified nutritionist and women's weight loss coach. Download her elegant eating handbook, simple and effective strategies for permanently living at your natural weight to get started. Ashley Buffa from Freedom Moms. Learning to treat chores as a family team is the key to creating and maintaining a tidy, organized home, and it's attainable through the Freedom Moms Smart Kid Chore System. 
Carrie Van Hooser, author of Tis the Season for Poetry, Through the Year with Poems and Activities for Children and Their Families. Inspired by Nikki, YouTube channel and Etsy shop. Nikki creates beautiful aprons, stationery, and so much more. Julie Coleman from My Confident Closet. Julie helps you build a seasonal wardrobe that fits your style and budget. Lindy Sellers, health, beauty, and lifestyle for women 40 plus. Nicole Brignol, founder of Lovely Bits, organic, intimate care for women. Rosenda Valenzuela from Little Pink Casa YouTube channel, inspiring ladies in vintage homemaking, elegant lifestyle, feminine wardrobe, and romantic home. Mrs. Shockley from A Home for Elegance Dress Boutique, Visit her online at ahomeforelegance.com. Sarah Morgan Wellness. Sarah is a wellness coach for women specializing in helping busy women, especially moms, find manageable ways to meet their own health and wellness needs without the guilt. Learn more at sarahmorganwellness.com. Tina Hugal from OutSchool. Tina teaches history through biographies for ages 8 to 16. Michelle Rohr from The Secret Owl Society, digital planners and e-courses on how to create passive income from your own planning business. Learn more at secretowlsociety.org. Alan's Scottish Shortbread uses their Scottish grandmother's heirloom family recipe to bake small batches of buttery shortbread that pairs perfectly with a pot of tea. Learn more at alanscottishshortbread.com. Stern Brothers Jewelry is a family-owned, custom-designed jewelry store specializing in making heirloom jewelry into something special for the next generation generation to cherish. Something to cherish, beautiful and meaningful products that promote the celebration and gift of life based off of the watercolor designs of artist Cherish Flyter. V-Cell Victoria, your Jaffra Beauty Consultant, featuring beautiful products such as Royal Jelly Skincare Rituals, Royal Almond Body Oils and Lotions, as well as Sumptuous Color. Special offers every month. And thank you to the following, Catherine Ray, Carly Tom from Living in Loveliness, Carolyn Haydu, Guy Blaze, Isabel Clabeau, Janice Leitner, Jen Carlson, Jet Rally Heron, Gina K. Kenry, Jenny Candelaria, Juliette Keeler Leban, Linda Eckloff, Marie Caudill, Maria Condor, Melissa M., and Prudently at Home. Thank you so much again to the Sheik Society for supporting The Daily Connoisseur. If you'd like to join the Sheik Society, I will leave the information down below or you could hit the join button. Thank you so much for joining me here on The Daily Connoisseur. Keep calm and remain classy and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye. Thank you.